Hello, welcome to another Map Libre tutorial. In this video, I'm going to show you an interactive web app that I created for visualizing open data from the Amazon uh, Sustainability Data Initiative or uh, short for ASDI. And the web app uh, link is in the video description below, so you can try it out by yourself. And I'm going to show you how to easily visualize the data um, using the web app. So if you're not familiar, you can check out the link here to the ASDI uh, data initiative. So this is basically a, a, a Amazon initiative that um, for hosting a lot of uh, uh, open geospatial data, including SETA data, also some land use, land cover data, and it's free and open access. So you can uh, access them using S3 bucket, downloading them uh, for your applications. But uh, for users that are not familiar with um, um, AWS, you might have a hard time trying to visualize the data. So I make it really easy for you to actually source the data interactively and also visualize the data. There are a lot of data. If you click the, the link, it will take you to the uh, registry of uh, open data on AWS. So these are pretty much uh, many of the open geospatial data that people publish from uh, by individual, by organizations. Uh, you can check out the link here. It has a lot of land use, land cover data, climate data, set data. It has a long list, but they're not very easy to use uh, because you do have to access the um, the data and also you need to know how to actually to use the state API. Not all the data have the special temporal asset data catalog API. And for those that uh, have the API, we can actually source the data using LeafMap interactively. So I'm going to show you how to use the, this uh, web app here. Once you go to the link uh, on the homepage and you can click this ASDI uh, tab here. Once you open it, it will show you the globe. Um, so you can actually visualize the data in either 2D or 3D. You can also click the, the globe button here to switch to the uh, 2D mode. So if, if you want to use the web marketer, uh, you can do that as well. So this is all uh, free and open access using uh, created using leaf map. So I'm going to use the globe mode here. And then on the right, it automatically uh, edit this uh, um, uh, interface here, allows you to source data. So this is uh, stack search and you can uh, click here you can uh, hide it if you want to so for this video i'm going to show you how to use the uh, aws open data but you can actually also utilize other custom uh, uh, stack catalog as well and for open data if you click the data set and then if you select the drop down list this shows you uh, all the data that uh, have the stack catalog stack api that means we can search the data for some of the data set, they don't have the stack uh, uh, endpoint. That means you, you cannot really source the data. It's just a bunch of files hosted uh, on a, uh, AWS S3 bucket. So it might not be easy actually to uh, source the data. But for those they have, it's actually very easy. So you can uh, select whatever data that you want and then you can source the data. So the easiest way would be just to <clears throat> zoom in to any location that you want. So for example, here, uh, I, I'm going to look at maybe Las Vegas here. And you can either just uh, zoom to the location that you want and then just click the save uh, the search button. It's going to search by utilizing this, uh, the, the, uh, basically the, the map view here. Or if you want, you can just maybe be more accurate. You can click the draw button and then you can um, create the region of interest. Once you have that, uh, you select the data that you want. So for this example, I'm going to use uh, Sentinel 2. And then you can also search the date. So if you have a particular um, time range that you want, you can also do this. So for example, I just want data maybe from uh, April uh, 1st and to the current day, for example, uh, June 1st, right? And then just click the uh, source button. You will search all the data set intersecting uh, with your region of interest. So behind the scene is using the spatial temporal exit uh, catalog API and using API endpoints. So if you, right now, this is basically all the footprints uh, intersecting with the region of interest and you can click to see basically attribute uh, what you want is basically the, the ID so for example here this is Sentinel 2B they also Sentinel 2A and if you want a particular uh, one and if you click you find the ID and then from there you can actually select on the drop down list here and then you can select a particular one um, basically the items use the the, the ID, but it's too long, so I kind of um, make it uh, shorten it. Um, so you can see, for example, the date. So these are ranging from uh, May 11 to May 31st. And you can just select whatever you like. So I'm gonna select maybe just the first one. 
and you can also select the uh, the band so first let me just use the default one and take a look so now i have this imagery so it's being loaded using the uh, stack api and also use the t-tile endpoint and you can have this directly so now i can actually zoom in and you can see more detail it's going to when you zoom in it's going to load the tile so it might take a couple seconds but once you have that you can turn the layer on and off uh, let me turn off the footprint right so this would be the uh, set uh, sentinel 2 data you can also change the opacity uh, interactively so uh, very nice and if you want you can actually change it to um, um, different bank combinations so for example you just want the rgb so you can change it to maybe uh, red and um, green and blue okay and since you are having the same uh, by default the layer name is going to use the item name so it might be just change it so for example click the uh, additional parameters and then from here i can just say rgb so try to add a different name so that it's uh, better so it's not overriding the existing data layer so i'm just going to click display now it should display the rgb so it might take a couple seconds okay so this is right now the rgb so it, it certainly you can see the differences here uh, the previous one was uh, first color composite so this is just the uh, rgb that you can uh, create and again you are welcome to try this one for any location around the globe uh, it doesn't matter so it's all using the stack api so this is just one uh, sample data set uh, let me uncheck this one. Oh, by the way so if you are working on an area that has a, a big cloud coverage you are you you can actually uh, add additional parameters so this is basically accepting a dictionary so you can just query and then EO cloud cover less than blah blah so it all depends on the data set so if the data set has the attribute you can use the attribute to further refine uh, your source okay so this is using um, the source the sentinel 2 data so next let me show you some of the data set um, for example i want to source maybe the um, how about the lane use lane cover data set so this is from the uh, impact observatory uh, i believe this is the also the uh, esri lane cover data set that they created so it's the 10 meter resolution using uh, sentinel 2 and also have nine classes so for example if this is the data set you want then I can zoom to any location. So for example, I'm going to zoom to my city, uh, Knoxville, Tennessee here. And then similarly, you need to draw a, a polygon. So for example, I want land use land cover for my city. Then I can just draw a rectangle here. And then so just click uh, here. Uh, you need to uh, uncheck this one because I think this one is using uh, Sentinel. So I don't know the exact date. So just click the uh, clear all the date time range and then just click search so as you can see so for this area it happens to have two um image things so we can use either one i only have two so uh oh it actually has a lot more here oh it has multiple time periods so from 2017 all the way to 2023 so basically it's a time series uh, length cover data so for example i just want the latest one uh, 2023 so let's click this one and then click display so it will display the length cover data uh, the nice about this is to also uh, use the color map so you don't need to actually have to worry about the color map so you use the original color map comes with the data and it's very nice so i can turn this um, footprint off and you can zoom in of course this is a sentinel 2 so a 10 meter resolution uh, it's not super high and right now uh, it takes a couple seconds because it's loading using the t-tiler so you can continue to zoom in and you can also update this one with satellite data so you can see how accurate it is right so this is 23 lane cover and i can turn this one off so you can see the behind the scene is the satellite there and you can change the opacity okay looks pretty close i, I think the uh, urban area is kind of overestimated so you can certainly see for example some of this area you have the um, um, vegetation and also the forest but it's all classified as um urban so it's kind of overestimated uh, uh definitely overestimate the uh, urban area so you can try this one for any uh location that you want so for example if i want another one 16 s so it's probably the one to the left then you also display that one so in this way you can pretty much visualize any data without having to download the data sometimes if you need data for a project uh, you might end, end up with downloading a lot of data that you don't need or maybe the data quality is not very good so you can certainly use the web app to actually quickly um, visualize the data before you try to uh, download the data 
okay uh, you can also try out some of the data set uh, um, again this is the whole list and uh, probably not all of them um, is uh, you can search the API some of them you might get an error but um, you can try it out see um, how it goes and maybe I can try maybe the uh, link cover here I'm not quite sure about this one so I uh, similarly I can draw a rectangle or you can use the same rectangle um, uh, or polygon that we drew uh, earlier so I click search again you should be able to search and find out all the data set but each data set is different some have smaller tiles some have larger one and sometimes it might take a while to return the data set if it has too many tiles so this is how you can use the web app but you might be wondering um, you already uh, visualize the data you want this data set it looks great you want to download it then. so how do i download so right now for the web app um, i don't provide a way for you to download but if you want to download the data then you can access them using a notebook and then you can uh, get all the links to those data that you search and for you to download uh, this one takes a little bit longer so let me switch to my local computer here to show you how to actually to use it so i'm going to basically just open uh, VS Code or I can use cursor so basically the uh, editor and once you open it up I can create a notebook and we can um, show you how to actually to utilize them so here is the interface and let me zoom in a little bit so uh, I'm going to create a new notebook so new file and maybe um, uh, aws.ipymb so this is just a simple notebook I'm going to show you how to actually to use that you certainly need to have um, um leave me install on your local computer so once you have that i can create a new code block so this one i need to change to python code block and i'm also going to select my um contact environment so once you have that i can just import leave map dot map liberate uh map liberate gl as leave map okay and then run it so next will be just leave map m dot leave map dot map oh okay it's pretty intelligence so let me just use this uh you i don't need to space so i find the center so this one the center will be um longitude and latitude so the ai is not doesn't know that yet so and then you can add for example the base map so for the base map i can use the every wall imagery or you can use the uacs whatever you like and m also you can set the projection so i can say projection equal to globe so in that way it's going to show you the globe um, by default okay so this is it so now i have this um, map created oh i need, also need to add the spatial temporal asset gui and also the um um draw control so i'm going to just m dot uh, add stack gui and then m dot add uh, draw control oh by the way so you can actually also see them from the source code here uh oh by the way it's still running anyway so if you go to the file here and then click pages so this one click the number one here asdi this one actually shows you the source code but it's like a solala uh web app so but the source code is pretty much similar so you can use notebook as well and once i have that now uh i need to run again you should have the um so uh, stack source GUI so it's actually here you click this button and then you should have that right now it doesn't work very well uh, using the dark mode so you can use uh, Jupyter Lab. Uh, it probably looks better so let me zoom in here and then move it to the right so same thing you can use this one you can um, uh, draw an area of your interest then you should be able to, uh, to get the result so for example I'm going to zoom in to um, this particular location uh, this file last figures uh, widget uh, here okay and I can similarly use a rectangle somewhere here okay once you have that uh, you can just come here find the data set that you want and then just click search uh, you should be able to find all the data set all right so once you have this you can click just display uh, you should be able to load the data set and visualize them uh, on the map here and the nice thing about um, accessing them in a Jupyter notebook environment is that you can actually get all the data sets. So, okay, it's displayed now. So you can just type m dot, um, let me move this one to the right. Okay, so from here, you can, uh, why is it too small? Anyway, so for here, you're going to type the m dot stack 
uh, GTF. So that means you're going to return all the result that we, uh, we searched earlier. It's a geodata frame. So uh, this gives you get all the, basically the footprint they saw on the map. Uh, very nice. So you don't have to actually do that manually. So all the data set that source your uh, source criteria, you'll be uh, written as a geodata frame. And then you can also end up stack um, items. Stack item is the one that you added to the map. So this is where you can actually get some of the links. If you click the scroll elements, uh, here you will find all the links um, to the to the data set. So if you click the link, then you will download the data set. So for example, if you want this one, you can click the link and then you should download, click, uh, pull up this one and then you just click save, then you will save this one uh, to your computer. So it might take some time, but uh, this is how you can actually access the uh, data under the hood that you visualize. So this is a single one that you loaded to the map, but you can also stack uh, items you will return all the items. So this is basically all the items. It's just a, a, a generator. So it's basically allows you to loop through the data and then you can download the, uh, the data set uh, that you want to download. So if you want to download a local data set programmatically, you can certainly do that. Uh, let me see here, stack source, stack item, stack deep. So this one also shows you all the data sets. So this is a lot of loads. So it returned as a dictionary. So we have key, have values, all the links will be within the value. So basically, once you have this, you can use LeafMap to download the data set. Uh, so all the links, so for example, links, uh, or have all the, uh, the uh, URL to the data set. So if you will want, for example, let me scroll to the uh, to the first one here, stack deep, and then I can just grab the first one. So for example, if this is the data set that you want, and then because it's a dictionary, so I can do it like this, you will get all of this and then so you have all the banks i believe it also has links so i'm going to get access to the links now you have all the links so with the links now you're going to you will see some of those actually has the http some of those has the s3 bucket so we certainly we just want the um the 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 http ui so we can download them uh, automatically so you can download for example um alt blue okay? name coastal blue uh what they be like so you can actually filter the data because you already have all the links. Uh, you can also exclude those that uh, ends with the pack. So um, maybe I can add another function uh, to package so that you can just one line call, you can just download all the data. But right now you still have to look through some of this dictionary and then you can download the data uh, for your applications. Okay, so that's what I want to show you. Uh, again, this is all very interactive, so we can um, um, minimize that if you want to. Again, it doesn't look very well uh, right now in the dark mode, but if you, change it to for example uh jupyter lab it should look a little bit better so i can just going to open my jupyter lab here just to show you what it looks like and one again okay so if you click this one now it looks uh, better so it's the same just like what you see on the um uh, web app that i show you and then from here i can just source any data that i want so for example i want this uh, particular location just zoom in you don't even have to draw a, a polygon you can just zoom to the area then you will search within the um, region of interest that you uh, zoom to and then once you have this now you can just click uh, display yeah, select from the items here then you will display the the imagery okay so this is what i want to show you i hope you find it useful you can use it to pretty much visualize uh, all kind of data that you want uh, from the amazon uh, asdi data initiative and um, I will see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.